Introducing Construct Searches. This podcast requires a basic knowledge of Accordance Bible software, but no knowledge of Hebrew or Greek. Construct Searches is Accordance's name for its graphical search interface. It's actually easier to use than our regular search entry box, and it's capable of much more complex searches. In today's podcast, we'll take a close look at this exclusive Accordance-only feature. Accordance offers us two different ways to search a text. Basic searches, which are text-based, and construct searches, which use graphics. Technically, these are called different user interfaces, often abbreviated UI. Here are the advantages of each of these UIs. Basic searches for all texts are quick and easy to use, and they search for words, phrases, and verses. They also only use one tab or one zone. In key number text, they will search for key numbers. While in grammatically tagged text, they will search for lexemes, roots, and inflected forms, as well as search for grammatical tags. In syntactically tagged text, they will also search for syntactical word tags. So what about construct searches? Well, in all text, they require an additional step. They search for words and phrases also, but not verses and they always require two tabs or zones. However, they allow for much more complex searches. In key number text, like basic searches, they search for key numbers. And in grammatically tagged text, they also search for lexemes, roots, and inflected forms, and for grammatical tags. In syntactically tagged text, they search for syntactical word tags, however, they also search for syntactical clauses and phrases. So here then are the differences. Basic searches are the only ones that search for verses, while construct searches allow for much more complex searches and search for syntactical clauses and phrases. The easiest method I know to open a new construct is to press the tab key to select the search entry box of the text we want to search. Then follow up with one of these three actions. If we prefer to use a menu, we can choose File, New Construct, then whatever kind of construct we want. Alternately, we can just type the command for the specific construct. Mac users will use Command, while PC users will use Control, and then add 1 for Simple, 2 for Greek, and 3 for Hebrew. Finally, if we want to customize our toolbar by adding the Construct button, we just click it and Accordance will automatically open the kind of construct appropriate for the text. Now, any of these three methods will open a new construct and automatically link it to the search text. The construct search interface is very different from the search entry box. First, it opens in its own tab. On the left is the construct palette. It contains a number of different elements, all of which can be dragged and dropped onto the construct. The search text to which the construct is linked is shown at the bottom of the tab. A Help button is located on the bottom left of the tab. Clicking it will switch to our browser where it will open Accordance's Help. The Description box is a convenient place to type a search description in case we plan on saving the search. Connecting items in the palette are dragged into this area, while column items are placed into one or more of these columns. Each represents a single word or other search element. A construct search generally searches either left to right, like English and Greek, or right to left, like Hebrew. However, this checkbox gives us the option to search in both directions. Finally, once we've finished setting up our search, we click this button to search the text. The items on the construct palette vary with the kind of construct and the text being searched. The simple construct is intended for untagged Bibles and texts, as well as key number Bibles. The Greek construct has items appropriate for grammatically tagged Greek texts, while the Hebrew construct has choices appropriate for grammatically tagged Hebrew texts. These syntax items will appear in all Hebrew and Greek constructs if a syntax database is present, but they only work if the search text itself is syntactically tagged. The three connecting items appear on the palette of all construct searches. Each of them has to do with how two search words or search elements relate, so they are dragged and dropped into the connecting items area, where they join two columns. 
The dots to either side are handles that we can drag to another column if we desire. Within specifies the minimum and maximum number of words between columns. The number includes the word or element in the second column. Inter identifies the intervening words or elements permitted or not permitted between columns. That also means we have to drag and drop another search element into the inter box, as shown here. The third item, agree, varies the most between the different kinds of construct searches as it allows us to select any of the ways in which a text has been tagged. In all cases, we can also use the not palette item to specify anything but that choice. We just drag and drop it onto any item in the construct to negate that item and a red line will appear over it. The search elements on the construct palettes are slightly different between simple constructs on the one hand and Greek and Hebrew constructs on the other. However, the bottom four elements are always the same. Character searches for a character, like an individual letter or a punctuation mark. Hits searches the hit words from a previous search. Count restricts the search to the total number of times the word appears and place requires the word be a certain number of words from the front of the verse, unless we've added the scope option to our target text. In that case, we can select whatever scope we want. Where these elements vary is at the top. Simple constructs always allow us to search for words and for key numbers in a key number text, while Greek and Hebrew constructs take advantage of the grammatical tagging to allow us to search for lexemes, inflected forms, and roots. Both Greek and Hebrew constructs can search for parts of speech, though the parts vary with the language. A few of these abbreviations can be tricky though, so let's go over them. Greek has adjective, article, improper preposition, noun, preposition, verb, and adverb, conjunction, interjection, participle, pronoun, and any which is short for any of these parts of speech. Hebrew has fewer, and some of those are different. Noun, participle, suffix, any, again short for any part of speech, as well as adjective, paragraph, pronoun, and verb. Whatever part of speech we select to drag and drop onto the construct, Accordance will open an appropriate dialog box to allow us to be even more precise in our searches. These are the same dialog boxes that appear when we add a grammatical tag to a regular search. Greek and Hebrew construct searches both include syntactic tags. In fact, construct searches are the only way to locate clauses and phrases in accordance. Among other uses, adding them allows us to restrict searches to words within that syntactical unit, much like scope allows us to constrain searches to a sentence, a verse, or chapter. Selecting either one opens a prompt where we can specify which kind of clause or phrase we'd like to include in our search. This option to specify the structure of a phrase is new in Accordance 11.2. In the same dialog box allows us to choose how far down the syntax tree Accordance should search for a match. It assumes one layer, so the setting here specifies two additional layers. Now, what if we make a mistake? No problem, double-clicking on any of these items in the construct will reopen the dialog box and allow us to change our selection. For more information on searching using syntax tags, see podcast number 135. I thought it would be helpful to provide some sample searches just to help us consider what is possible. These two are designed to look for intensive forms. That's a Hebraism that it emphasizes a word by using it twice in a row. The first search in a key number Bible looks for two key numbers side by side that agree but are translated by different words. Notice these two examples in Genesis 2. You may surely eat and you shall surely die. The second search, this time in Hebrew, looks for the same construction. However, here we can just look for two identical lexemes side by side. This search will include a few places where the hit is not an intensive expression, but can easily be made more specific by specifying different inflected forms uninterrupted by a punctuation mark. 
That construct seemed to me to be a bit much for an introductory podcast, though, so I used a simpler form here. Let me invite you to see if you can figure out how to make the more complex construct on your own. Here's two more. The simple construct on the left searches for all variations of the phrase angel of the Lord, whether the first word is angel or messenger, and the last is God or Lord. Of must always occur between them, but I've used the inter to specify that the only other word that may come between them is the definite article, the. The Greek construct on the right searches for a different phrase. It searches for prayers that end in, to the ages, amen. It combines a pretty simple construct search with the within and field commands in the regular search entry box to ensure the phrase occurs at the end of the verse. I hope these spark your own creativity in construct searches. Searching with constructs can be a lot of fun if you don't wait until you absolutely need one to begin using them. Practice makes perfect. I hope this podcast will encourage you to add this accordance feature to your toolbox of Bible study software techniques. This has been Dr. J for Accordance Bible Software. Thank you for watching this episode of Lighting the Lamp.